Hey folks, this is Mr. Mega Man Fan. Like, share, comment, subscribe. You know all the things to do. This may look like an ordinary Nintendo Wii U, but I guarantee you it's not. This one has custom firmware on it, which enables me to run a PC Engine Core in RetroArch. That's why I'm showing it to you today on the PC Engine files. And it works really well. This is a lot more convenient than trying to get games virtual console one at a time. And for those of you who've already made backups using something like the Terra Onion SSD3, then you can just play your backups on Wii U or heck anything else you want. So this may be a very convenient way for you to access your entire library on your Wii U or any other device that you can run RetroArch on. But how did I get RetroArch running on the Wii U? Well, that was a multi-step process. The first of which was actually finding a complete Wii U. That sounds easy, but it's not as easy as you'd think, especially if you wanna buy one locally. For example, don't go buy anyone at a thrift store that's just the console itself without the touchpad, you're not going to get very far that way. Same goes for eBay. Don't buy a quote unquote loose console. You might eventually be able to buy a touchpad separately and pair it up, but you might have to do some hacking just to do that, especially if the console and the touchpad are from different regions. Of course, hacking a Wii U makes it region free, which is one of the advantages of doing this besides being able to run a PC Engine emulator. But make sure you get a full set to make your life a whole lot easier. Then you're gonna wanna go to wiiu.hacks.guide and I'm not gonna take you through this step by step. I'm gonna link this URL in the description and tell you to go here once you decide that you want to hack the Wii U that you bought. And I would also say check the website because if the methods change, I don't want to just tell you the methods and then there's a newer, better method. This website will always have the latest, most up-to-date way to hack your Wii U. And please keep in mind, you do this at your own risk, which they tell you right there on the website. If anything goes wrong, it's not their fault. But if you follow the directions carefully, as I did, then nothing really should go wrong. On your Wii U, you're going to go to wiiuexploit.xyz. The hacks guide will tell you this. On your computer, it'll give you a 404, but on a real Wii U, it will not. And then for RetroArch, I recommend this Reddit thread that tells you all the steps to put it on your SD card. You do this after your Wii U is hacked and you have the custom firmware up and running, but you'll download all these files, unzip them, put them in the correct folders on the SD card, and then put the SD card back into your Wii U. You may be tempted to do this through the homebrew browser that you can launch on the Wii U when you have the custom firmware running, but in my experience, trying to install RetroArch that way crashed, and I thought it was slow even before it crashed, so I don't really recommend doing it that way. It's much faster to put the SD card in your computer and copy over the files that you've downloaded and it's also much faster than doing it through FTP. Again, you can get an FTP running on the custom firmware of the Wii U, but it's really only useful for small file sizes. All the files of RetroArch, if you try to do those over FTP, you could be looking at hours upon hours of transfers. Then the RetroArch.com website will have the zip file that you need to expand and drop on the SD card. It's right there. It's not hard to find and it's free. So these are all the things that you're gonna need along with, of course, a blank SD card formatted to FAT32 and Tiramisu, which is the custom firmware running on your Wii U. If you've done all that, then the world is your oyster and you can play your entire PC Engine library or sample any PC Engine games that you've never played before, but always wanted to. Hey, maybe you've never played Air Zonk. I've covered it on this channel on the PC Engine files, but you may not have experienced this game and 
there's quite a lot of reasons for that. I mean, first of all, TurboGrafx-16 did not do well commercially in the United States, as we all know. But also, you may just have been priced out of it if you got into collecting for TurboGrafx or PC Engine in recent years and you went to any store that actually had a copy, and there probably aren't many, or you looked at prices on eBay and got sticker shock when you saw it was $136 loose and $480 complete. Now, this is not an advocation of piracy. <sighs> I'm not doing that. I'm not saying that, and I'm not telling you where to get ROMs. All I'm saying is, well, sample things before you pay $130 or $480 for them, okay? Try before you buy. I don't want you to spend $130 and it's not your game and it's not your cup of tea and you're out a whole lot of money. Two or three Turbo Graphics games could cost you as much as a PlayStation 5. I know that's crazy, but that's the reality of the situation. In fact, just a couple of these games alone could cost you more than a used Wii U. I can say that for certainty because I know what I paid for the one that I put custom firmware on. The sad state of retro collecting right now is that even a relatively common game like Bonk's Adventure can go for $46 loose and $65 complete. So there's just no getting around the prices being high, especially when it comes to this console, this platform. Unless you import PC Engine games from Japan and use a Hue card converter, or you use something like the Terra Onion SSD3 or SHD3, or a Turbo EverDrive made by Crix, you've got options. And that's all I'm really trying to say when I show you the Wii U running a PC Engine on RetroArch is you have options. You can try a lot of things without spending exorbitant amounts of money and the time to acquire them by importing them or hunting them down. It, you've got to explore those options if you want to explore this console. Or you can buy retro compilations that include some of these classic games or some of them are available on Steam with full emulator packages built into them that run it in an emulator for you. You, you can explore any of those different ways to play classic PC Engine games other than paying the exorbitant prices that they go for. So, it's fun. I think this emulator works great. I give you one caveat with it. It's that when you launch through the graphical user interface on the Homebrew Launcher, don't switch to a different platform from the one you're currently in. Like, if you fire up the Turbo Graphics PC Engine Core, don't quit and load content from Super Nintendo or Sega Genesis or you'll crash it. If you want to do that, you exit the RetroArch application altogether, select a different core from the Homebrew Launcher, and then play those games. You want the Genesis games, launch the Genesis Core. You want the NES games, launch the NES Core. Just keep it to the core that you launched and quit RetroArch and restart. I know that's a bit of a quirk, but in the Wii U's case, it's a little bit necessary. I mean, it's sort of amazing that you can run Homebrew like this on a recent Nintendo console at all. I mean, with the Wii, it was always possible to run content because Team Tweezers defeated the security of that a long time ago. But seeing this stuff running on a Wii U is a treat for me because the Wii U is a console I'm a big fan of. Even though it was not a huge success commercially in the United States or worldwide as a whole, partly because people saw it as a clone of the Wii and not a console in its own right, which is Nintendo's own fault for naming it that way. But you can't say they didn't do it on purpose because they sold 100 million Wiis, so they probably thought, oh, 100 million people will want to upgrade from a Wii to a Wii U instead of looking at it the other way around, that 100 million Wii users would go, 
Why would I buy a Wii U just to play Wii games? I already have a Wii. You see the problem there. So it was partly marketing and it was partly technology. The Wii U wasn't as powerful as the other next generation platforms that it was alongside. But you know what? Saying that, it's really more powerful than you think when it can run all these different emulators in retro arc cores and they all work great. So it may not be a PlayStation 4 or an Xbox One, but it's pretty damn good. And I'm going to keep using it for both my original Wii U games and for running emulators like this. I mean, if you have the virtual console games, PC Engine Turbo Graphics games, that's great, but this way you can play all the games that were never even released for virtual consoles. So, as I said, the world is your oyster if you want to take advantage of this and have some fun. And games like Clax and Battle Load Runner and Air Zonk are lots of fun to play at. They're timeless games as far as I'm concerned. You can go back to them anytime and have yourself a good time. And with RetroArch, you have advantages that you don't have over a normal console unless you have a device that allows you to save state and rewind and pause and customize the sound and graphics and the controller you want. And I don't suspect most people do, even if they own the original hardware, because those things, the adapters themselves, the different variations of EverDrives and whatnot, they're not cheap either, so... You may actually have a console and have none of the extras that you can buy for it, the aftermarket stuff that the retro community in the homebrew scene has made. So with RetroArch, you've got advantages over real hardware in certain areas. You don't have the authenticity of playing it in a real way with a real system, but you do have the advantage of capturing a save state anywhere in a game anytime you want and then powering off your console coming back later powering it on and resuming right where you left off by loading your save state i like that i'm in favor of that so please keep that in mind if you decide to use retroarch not just on the wii u but on anything else that you might own. The only downside as I can see it is that maybe you have too many options when you can run RetroArch on something like Wii U or the PlayStation Vita or 3DS or anything else because sometimes you can just get overwhelmed by having a full library of all your games and being able to save and load any of them at any time and then you just don't focus on one game whereas if you have to get up and put one cartridge or one cd or one dvd into one console you've already made the effort you're probably going to keep playing that game instead of bailing out of it and switching to another one so quickly and there is that physical attachment too i mean i know i said turbo graphics games are expensive but it is nice to hold a real turbo graphics game in your hand and put it in the console and then take it out later and be able to look at it in the box you can't do that with a digital only file i am never issuing physical for digital i'm just saying i can live with having both options in my arsenal as opposed to being committed to just one or the other i collect physical where i can when i can and what's affordable to but I also like digital for the convenience and for the ability to open up retro to a wider audience who might otherwise never get to try these games. And quite frankly, some of them might get lost. You know, a game like Racing Damashi, which may have done moderately well in Japan, but is almost unknown outside of PC Engine enthusiasts. What would be the fate of that game 20, 30, 40 years if there weren't digital copies of it? If every physical copy vanished and nobody had ever played it digitally, that game would cease to exist. That sounds paranoid, but truth is, there have been games that have been lost because nobody thought 
to preserve them or the source code got thrown away by the developer or something was destroyed on a hard drive and it was unrecoverable or there was a fire somewhere and the office burned down and all the original assets of the game went up in the fire. So these things happen. That's why preservation matters. Anyway, as always, thank you for watching.